800 wvhu and online 800 wvhu.com thank you so much for tuning in really appreciate that um i was mentioning to you earlier about uh, my next guest and um uh, he is he, he was right smack dab in the middle of uh the Kanawha county textbook wars this was back in 1974 so i don't really remember this i was only six uh but this was huge huge news not just in Kanawha county but certainly all over the state and uh the implications were really far reaching uh and and this was uh, as carl has put it in his book and we've talked to carl before and that's that's how i've learned about this uh it was the original uh not maybe not the original uh tea party but it was certainly much like uh, what would become the Tea Party movement uh, along about uh, 2010. Uh, Carl Priest, author of Protester Voices, the 1974 textbook Tea Party, joins me once again. Carl, good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning. I'm wonderfully blessed. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks for coming on. Uh, so this all was, was going on in September, this week in September of 1974, uh, and you know, when you talk about West Virginia history, certainly this is part of it. And, uh, you know, some of the, uh, the, the state's newspapers, uh, they, they've gotten it wrong. They, they uh, uh, they have, uh, just like they do regularly with, uh, with current stories, they're trying to rewrite history with their own perspective. You've, uh, I know tried to correct them, uh, but, uh, even the, the Putnam Herald, uh, the Intermountain, uh, the, these newspapers, uh, in, in reflecting upon this part of West Virginia history this week, uh, th- they have not gotten it exactly right. Uh, let's set them straight. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, by the way, the, uh, the the issue started in the spring of '74, and I can let you know about that if you want to hear about it. But sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, just back us up and take us to, from the beginning. Well, in the spring of 74, five teachers uh, made the final decision for the selection of English and language arts textbooks uh, for West Virginia's largest county. That's Kanawha County. There were about 45,000 students in that county at that time. Uh, In previous years, the Board of Education just rubber-stamped the teacher recommendation. They never read the books. This time, a lady, Alice Moore, board member noticed something one of the teachers said about non-standard English. So she decided to look at the books carefully. She found more than just a grammar issue. She found some seriously objectionable material, even obscene. And then within a few thousand weeks, thousands of parents were asking the board, uh, a few weeks, thousands of parents were asking the board not to use the textbooks. Uh, at a summer board meeting, the uh, the board unanimously deleted eight of the worst books, but they decided to let the rest of them stay. And the parents naively believed the board worked for them, and uh, they launched the boycott that started in September. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that that's when this uh, really got underway the the boycott, and this this got. Uh, really really heated uh and uh had far-reaching implications really this may have been the uh, the start also uh unknowingly of what became the homeschool movement in west virginia which by the way uh homeschooling is still the 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 fastest growing if it was its own uh, school district the fastest growing school district in west virginia uh it's, it's grown by leaps and bounds not only in west virginia but all over the country over the last two and a half years because of the pandemic and what parents have seen that that's gone on with the, the shutdowns. And when they saw, uh, what, uh, little Johnny, and little Sally were, were learning, uh, at home with virtual learning, uh, they decided they didn't want that. So, you know, the, it sparked a movement, uh, maybe even unknowingly. It did, but it didn't catch fire then because, uh, we thought we could fix public schools. And uh, speaking of home schools, as a retired teacher, I am a strong advocate of homeschooling. Every year I give a uh, standardized test, a nationally normed standardized test to uh, some high, local high school homeschoolers. 
part of CHUVI, Christian Home Educators of West Virginia. And I have been for 15 years very impressed at the intelligence and the, the personalities and the demeanor of those students. So I urge parents to rescue their children if they can, homeschool them, but find some way to get them out of the government schools. So, uh, Carl, in your book, and and I know, uh, you know, on your website, you've tried to to set the record straight on this. Um, yeah, uh, so I know oh. you've tried to to set the record straight uh, in your book and and uh, on your website. So, uh, talk a bit about uh, some of the uh, the the myths that have come about from this. Uh, you know, what you've tried to correct with uh, some of these latest newspaper reports about West Virginia history and the and the textbook wars. Well, what you see happening today to Trump and, and people like him happened to these protesters, except they didn't have the the, the uh, social media, whatever you call it, uh, and uh, the ability to fight it. They uh, were maligned falsely, and I, I've, I've documented it. Anybody that wants the facts can go to my website and find the facts. Some of the main charges about the uh, protesters that we were narrow-minded, we were ignorant, we were religious fanatics, we were censors, we were violent, and we were racist. Mm. And I refute every one of those with documented facts. Yeah, I believe they have, um, if you look this up, you just do Google searches on this, you're going to find pictures of uh, the KKK being involved and so forth. Uh, so address that issue. Yeah, that was one of the sad parts of the situation. I was at a meeting with protesters uh, one time, and a guy who was with KKK stood up and presented his pitch. It wasn't accepted. Now, uh, I'll call him the Donald Trump of the of the protest was a preacher by the name of Marvin Horn, who's recently deceased. He made the mistake of going to a rally at the Capitol sponsored by the KKK. And uh, all he did was stand there and listen because he wanted to hear what they had to say. But those pictures uh, nailed him and the propagandists used that to uh, say that we were racist. Uh, sadly, there were conservative and Christian black folks who were on our side, but they didn't go public because uh, they marched to the tune of the liberals. Uh, sadly, they're being used today in, in the, the modern culture war. Mm. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, so what was your, you were a, a public school teacher at this time, back in 74? Yeah, I was in my third year, and I had a, a, a young baby son. And you mentioned Alice. Uh, she was on the board. Who were some of the other key figures that were part of this that were trying to stand up for parents and what was right? Well, Alice Moore uh, was a godsend. And by the way, she had went to a conference. Uh, this is, a, I guess you call it a God wink, uh, before that, uh, this all broke out and listened to a, a, a black guy, very intelligent black guy, talk about how – how the, the black folks were being used and, and brought down by liberals. So she, she was inspired by him, and I, I got the reference to that in the book. But Alice Moore was wonderful. She's the key, and I hope you can interview her someday. There were five key preachers. Three of them are deceased, and they were Ezra Grayley, Marvin Horn, Henry Thaxton, Avis Hill and Charles Quigley. Mm. Yeah, I remember some of those names, and uh, that that is the key. Uh, we need people from behind the pulpit to stand up for what is being done to to kids, what is being taught to kids. And well, you thought it was bad in 1974. Think of how much worse it is today with uh, critical race theory, uh, with uh, you know the the LGBT radical agenda uh just being shoved down the throats of our children uh young young children and, and then the drag queen story hour 
that's going on in schools today. Uh, so because of, you know, people giving in as far back as 1974, uh, now look what we have today in 2022. Absolutely. And uh, I, I want to say the problem with, in America is not so much politicians as pulpits, hmm. preachers that do not do what they should do. Parents need to rescue their children. Uh, what I saw when I was still teaching, and I retired in the early 2000s, uh, it, it is enough to shock people. But as you just said, what's going on now is 10 times, 100 times worse. And public schools can't be fixed because whatever gains that conservatives and Christians make will be canceled out because the ACLU and their allies own government schools. And they'll quickly take back any, any victories that we gain. So we're wasting valuable time and money trying to fix government schools. We need to get our children out. And if uh, the Lord delays his return, the only hope for America is to rescue our children. Mm. Yeah, you're talking about um, you know some of the similarities of uh, facts being distorted regarding the 1974 Kanawha County textbook uh, wars. Um, you, uh and you related that to January 6, 2021, and, and how the media has distorted facts there. Uh, just like, you know, Ashley Babbitt was shot and killed. She was a Trump supporter. Uh, she was the only one that was that was shot and killed, and uh, she, she was uh, shot by Capitol Police. Uh, th- they try to say the same thing about uh, the 1974 Kanawha County controversy too, right? Absolutely. The, there was only one person that was shot, and he, he was seriously injured, almost died. But he was shot by a leader of a group that was opposed to the protesters. And that was censored back then and is practically unknown now. But I can document that if people want to know the facts. Yeah. Uh, the other... Uh, Shots that were fired could have been fired by anybody, That, like at empty school buses. Could have been false flags. I honestly don't know who, who shot them. There were thousands of protesters, and it, it, there probably were some stupid ones, just like in the January 6th, there were some stupid people. But, but the majority of them were good, honest, God-fearing, loyal, patriotic people. So what were some of the Um, the things that that became uh, that that were revealed about the textbooks and and how did parents find out about this? Like you say, there wasn't social media back then, so they got upset and it just started spreading. And once parents found out about this, they they said, "Well, you know, we're going to 
find a different way to instruct our children. Uh, I believe some of them were meeting in churches and so forth to, to instruct their children. Uh, so talk about that. How how did this get out? And you mentioned Alice. I mean, it was was she the the one that really revealed it? But but uh, did people not start investigating on their own at all? I know people just trusted teachers back then more than they do now, and they trust them too much now. Uh, but Alice uh, went around the county. Uh, first, she had the books delivered to her house, and she read them. Then she went around the county wherever she could go. It was usually a church, may have been a church every time, took the books and let the people read them for themselves. And that's how it spread, by word of mouth, people looking at the books, uh, a uh, organization called the Business and Professional Men's Alliance for Better Textbooks got involved, and they bought a uh, full-page ad in the local papers that had the citations, the book and what it said, and the page number. And, and just like uh, today, uh, when upset parents go to these uh, Board of Education meetings and they they begin reading some of the uh, vulgar language in these books that are targeted at young children. And I'm talking about the, the sexualization, the LGBT radical agenda. Um, they start reading some of that stuff, and they're censored at the board meeting. Yeah. That, if that wasn't so funny, I would cry. It's it's a shame, but it, it's already happened. It's, it's history that's being repeated in, in the year 2000. Uh, I tried to get scientific facts that refuted evolution taught in Kanawha County, and I even had support of, of the science teachers. Now, I, I spoke at a board meeting, and at the same meeting, and this is just a coincidence, a parent got up and started reading from a book that his daughter was being uh, had to use at the, a local high school, and they stopped him back then. And I've, I've got a... Uh, page here right with me now if i started reading it you probably would have to blank out some of the things i said mm. and that was in 2000 yeah oh my goodness yeah I've, I've seen some of these things uh that that uh that are in the books that are in the if they're not being taught they're in the libraries at the schools and and so children have you know access to them any way they want um by the way speaking of access to books your book, Protester Voices, the 1974 Textbook Tea Party, uh, is people have access to that. I, I don't know if you're still doing it, but you were uh, providing this at no charge just to get the message out. Yeah, I, I have uh, several copies left from the uh, original printing, and I'll give them to uh, home schools, Christian schools, or any sincere person that, that'll read it. Now, if they could pick them up in cross lanes, I'll arrange to meet them. If I have to ship them, they'll have to pay the fee. But I'll put them out at no charge. That's awesome. Uh, and folks, how can folks reach you? Through your website? Yeah, the best thing to do is go to insectman.us, and uh, there's contact information there. Yeah. And while they're there, if you don't mind, can I tell you what they should do? Yeah, Absolutely. Over on the left of the home page is a column of butterflies with links. Down below that is a picture of the cover of my book. It says, uh, uh, I forget what it says, Textbook War, Protester Voices. Click on that, and that will take them to all the pages that, that they want to find out where the, the facts are presented the facts about the book, the facts about the protests, the refutations to the accusations, all kinds of material there if they want to look. Now, people that don't want to look, uh, that's another term for liberal. Mm -hmm. So it's 48 years ago this week that the protest started in Kanawha County over the textbooks. A lot of folks remember these, uh, th these uh, protests. Um, and, you know, the protests continue today, as I mentioned, at uh, Board of Education meetings across the country. But, uh, Carl, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, our DOJ has uh, deemed those uh, mama bears and, and uh, frustrated parents as domestic terrorists. Yes. Yeah. That's what they did to us. They didn't use that term back then, but uh, that's what they did. 
they can't beat us on a level playing field with intelligent conversation. Yeah. So they have to resort to slurring us and censoring us. We're not afraid to debate. Yeah. Uh, just this week, Carl, on uh, theblaze.com, there's a story about a book for 8- to 12-year-olds uh, that says kids should watch their parents have sex. And then it gets even worse, the headline says. Uh, it's uh, Sex Education for 8- to 12-year-olds by Anna LeBlanc. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that book, uh, but it's that's just disgusting. And, and that's just the tip of the iceberg on what – they're shoving down the throats and, and putting in the minds of young children. Absolutely. And, and there's another West Virginia lady, I believe you've interviewed her, Debbie DeGroff. Oh, yes. She is the expert on children's literature. But I've got to say this based on something you just said. The left, the God-haters, they understand where the front line of the culture war is located. That's for the hearts and minds of children. That's a no-brainer. They get it. I've got all kinds of citations on one of my web pages that prove that that they that they know that the battle to win the culture yeah. is to get the hearts and minds of children. We've got to rescue our children. You know, when something just like uh, this whole global warming, climate change stuff, uh, think about the the amount of uh, indoctrination through so-called education that went on. 10, 15, even 20 years ago with climate change, with global warming, and now see what's become of it. We have, we have legislation at the state and federal levels that are turning our economies upside down all in the name of climate change. And and it's because people's minds have been changed due to the indoctrination in the public schools over the years. You nailed it, Tom. Exactly. And so when you think about some of the other things, the sexualization of kids, um, that's where they want to take us next in, uh, you know, men marrying little boys and and things like that. That's the, I mean, that sounds far-fetched, but uh, so did global warming 25 years ago. Uh, Yeah, it went from stupid to evil. You were, you were in the public schools in the 1970s. Back then, it was global cooling was, was what they were pushing, wasn't it? The, the, the ice age. That's right. They, they use whatever they can. They, we're really in a, in a, a world battle. It's, it's for one world government, and this is, a, this is part of it. And America, if America falls, then they can get the one world government. So... Uh, that's why they're going after America so hard, and the front line, as I said, is for the children. Yeah. All right, uh, Carl Priest, uh, the the website is insectman, all one word, insectman.us. And uh, Carl's book, and I hope that you'll get this, uh, Protester Voices, the 1974 T, I'm sorry, the 1974 textbook Tea Party. Uh, it's a great account from uh, somebody who's firsthand in the middle of all this. Uh, Carl was a public school teacher in 1974 with the uh, textbook uh, controversies that went on. Uh, Carl, thank you so much for coming on again. Uh, Also, uh, Carl is with uh, Exodus Mandate West Virginia. Uh, Check that out as well, uh, promoting uh, parents to get their kids out of the public school system. Carl, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, and to your listeners, thank you for listening to the best talk show, in my opinion, in America. Oh, bless your heart. Thank you.